When it comes to Space Marine chapters, we are absolutely spoiled in terms of choice. And in today's video, I want to go through some of the best successor chapters that are out there. But there's a little bit of a twist on this one because we're picking from Ultima founding chapters. This is when Gilliman returned and Belisarius Call unleashed the Primaris Marine upon the galaxy. So let's jump in and let's get waffling and the first chapter i want to talk about is none other than the storm reapers and these chaps hail from the gene lineage of jagatai khan i wasn't really a big fan of jagatai khan back in the day but what chris rate did with the white scars during the great crusade and the siege of terror the white scars became my number two favorite legion one of my favorite chapters in warhammer 40,000. so when i see them getting new successors with that gene lineage going all the way back to Jagatai Khan, I have to take a moment out and read about those chapters and what we've got with the Storm Reapers is absolutely awesome. When it comes to this chapter, since they share that gene lineage of Jagatai Khan, they are absolutely ferocious and brutal in battle. With their swords, with their axes, they will take apart any Xenos or heretical foe, but they still have that wise and compassionate side about them, just like their gene father, Jagatai Khan. They have set up their home fortress monastery on a feral world called Jagan, and this is basically the base operations of where they launch all their campaigns into the void. When it comes to notable campaigns, the two that we have on record now is the Brimstone Stampede, and this is where the Storm Reapers actually work with another favorite chapter of mine and that is the gray knights when the great rift appeared and all the chaos and the demons were pouring out of it the gray knights of course were involved in trying to slay the demons and control the hordes of chaos and the storm reapers assisted in one of those battles helping the gray knights banish and destroy demons from destroying another imperial world for those of us old enough to remember the vigilist campaign that happened if i'm not mistaken right with the launch of 8th edition this chapter took part in that as well working with their parent chapter the white scars to try and battle chaos the xenos forces that were all present on that planet and keeping that doorway that passage open for imperial forces to connect with the northern part of the imperium that was all cut off due to the great rift and the way they look is really good on the eye as well this is why i normally choose like what chapters to go with is just the rule of cool and how they look and this chapter doesn't miss all in white which is incredible you know the white scars are all in white it's it's so fantastic when you get to see like an armor with all white power armor it just looks amazing on the battlefield uh, the chapter symbol with the axe and the red uh, bolts of lightning um it really really reminds me of like bretonia like that type of noble bretonian lord really love it think it's awesome on to the next one and that is none other than the dark krakens and these hail from the gene lineage of vulcan they are a successor chapter of the salamanders and there's so much going on with this chapter i see them as complete opposites to what the salamanders are which really makes them stand out in the lore and in the galaxy now this chapter probably has some of the most lore when it comes to ultima founding chapters and as i mentioned they're complete opposites to the salamanders a fun fact about this chapter is that the salamanders actually didn't know the dark krakens hailed from their gene lineage and once they found out that the dark krakens came from vulcan's gene lineage the salamanders sent like a bunch of chaplains over to the chapter to tell him of like the promethean ways and like what it is to be a son of vulcan and how to act as a son of vulcan now when you look at the salamanders they come from the planet nocturne it's a fire world you know there's salamanders literal like salamanders on it like dragons and stuff there's lava there's fire it's burning it's everything but when you look at the dark krakens it's the other side of that coin they come from an oceanic world it's storms it's water it's wet right they are salamanders but complete opposite when it comes to noble campaigns for this chapter they've been fighting a lot against the tunids especially high fleet leviathan what we have now of course with 10th edition is the fourth tyrannic war so if you're thinking of making a chapter that has connections to the salamanders maybe dark krakens is for you because this is the time to do it this is the fourth tyrannic war this is the big one these chaps are experiencing hunting down and purging this xenos foe from the galaxy also as i mentioned with the first chapter 
their color scheme is absolutely perfection. The black and the purple go together beautifully. The chapter symbol has that kind of Cthulhu type of vibe that goes along with it, which makes sense because, as I mentioned, this chapter is based on a water world, so maybe there's something deep and dark lurking underneath the waves, and that's why they've made that chapter symbol. And the next chapter on the list is solely here because I'm scared if I don't put them on the list, they may come and judge me. And that is the Bringers of Judgment. And these hail from the gene lineage of Lion L. Johnson. They are successors of the Dark Angels. And they are absolutely brutal when it comes to their warfare. So brutal that even the Inquisition has turned their gaze upon them because some of the atrocities that they've acted on on imperial worlds yes they're that bad trust me don't let that amazing chapter color scheme fool you that white and gold is probably one of the most greatest chapter color schemes i've seen just how it goes on they look like saviors sent by the emperor but really you're there to be damned because the way that the bringers of judgment work is that they judge you on what you do for example let's say a small element rebelled against the imperium on a world if the bringers of judgment are deployed they will say the entire populace is guilty by association even though they defeat that rebellion and cast it down they will then judge everyone on that planet to be the bad guys towards the imperium and eradicate that entire population this is why as i said the inquisition has turned their gaze to them because they're literally going around and destroying imperial world after imperial world they're probably doing more damage than chaos is doing at this moment in time just because they're a bit too zealous maybe they should belong to Lorgar's gene lineage rather than Lionel Johnson's. And on the topic of Lionel Johnson, now that he's returned, hopefully he can reign this chapter and maybe sit them down and say, listen, right, I appreciate you going around, you know, stopping rebellions and heretic forces and stuff like that. But there's a time and a place where you start burning everyone by guilty of association. We can't do that, right? We're here to protect the Imperium, not to burn it alive. Pushing on to the next chapter on this list, and this is probably one of my most favorite successor chapters. I've spoken about them before because of just how cool and awesome they are. And this is the Void Tridents. Now the Void Tridents come from the gene lineage of Primarch Rebuti Gilliman. Maybe that's the only downside to them at this moment in time, but they excel in void combat void assault strike vanguard assaults crashing down upon the enemy and ripping them apart for people who know me and one of the reasons why i picked imperial fist way 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 back is because they were the masters of void combat during the great crusade and the horus heresy and these chaps now are kind of like that you know they jump in they go in with um, um drop pod assaults they go in with thunderhawk strikes they really take it to the enemy board the ships rip it apart take the ships in some cases they also actually come from a world um which is just like the dark krakens an oceanic world i think i have a weird connection with oceanic world successor chapters like the dark krakens like the void tridents and um the iron snakes as well but then really not an ultima founding chapter one of the really cool things i love about this chapter as well is that they are one of two chapters that have been tasked to defend the realm of ultramar by none other than gilliman himself when all the plague wars happen gilliman set up like more defenses it doesn't want his realm to fall to of course the powers of chaos so some chapters were said okay you stay here you defend ultramar while the rest of us go out and try and take the enemy we don't want anyone sneaking in the back door and taking our home worlds while we're out fighting and the void tridents take that up with great honor and they are there protecting the realm of ultramar and saving the best chapter to last of course i'm not going to make this video without rogel dawn's gene lineage in here and this is none other than the soul drinkers now before everyone starts losing their mind in the comment section telling me whoa 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 this is not an ultima founding chapter varak you're wrong technically they were refounded in the ultimate chapters yes they had a bit of a story involving a certain spider which there's no point in getting in, into in this video but they have now been reborn and they have been reborn with dawn's gene seed maybe before they weren't dawn's gene seed but now they have there's a big short story out there which i won't ruin but maybe just maybe the primaris marines in this chapter 
are beginning to learn the fate of the old soul drinkers and that may bring some drama going forward in certain narrative stories fingers crossed gw explain and go into more detail about that i've actually played around with doing soul drinkers as my next primaries force but i'm leaning on doing the executioners instead since new law has stated that the executioners have been redeemed for their actions during the badab war and they're back recruiting new marines now which are all primaris and just before we close the video out i want to do an honorable mention list and the first up on this list is none other than the dragon spears the dragon spears hail from the salamander gene lineage just like the dark krakens these are a fleet based chapter though they don't have a home world they go around just fighting wherever they want some notable battles that they've done is with the orcs and uh, fighting against the greenskins really really cool chapter have an awesome chapter symbol and a great color scheme another one on this list to note is the unnamed the reason why they're called the unnamed named because this chapter hails from the gene lineage of the dark angels and when they were informed about the the secrets of the dark angels they were like well we don't want to be called anything we don't want to be associated with this so they basically just went as the unnamed so technically they do have a name now called the unnamed i know it's hard but that's what they are at this moment in time and lastly on my um chapter list we have the wolf spear the wolf spear are on here because they are the only successor well loyal successor chapter should i say of the space wolves that are currently around right now the space wolves only have one loyalist successor chapter and it is the wolf spear they're kind of like um the space wolves well really they are like space wolves but they're more of like a covert stealthy type of space wolf but once they unleash their um, ferocity in battle it's just like the space wolves all over again but they love sneaking up on their opponents and taking them down in like the winter snow and stuff like that really really cool chapter if you're thinking about doing something that space wolves but not really space wolves check out the wolf spear anyway chaperunios thank you for coming thank you for watching as always if you've got any thoughts feedback anything like that if you've got any ultima founding that's the main thing here ultima founding chapters that i didn't put on my list and you want to make your own list of the best ultima founding chapters post it down below i'd love to see what you have and we can talk about it down there as we always do see you in a bit have a great day evening night whatever you are in the world and bye bye oh.